Welcome to Dave Knows Comics. What had just occurred to me is that I can actually show you guys to draw, unlike on the wrestling channel, where I can't really show you how to wrestle. Uh, so here we go. Uh, first up, I like to have a mechanical pencil, okay? As well as a number two pencil. I'll get into why later on. Uh, so I think that's the first place you gotta start with. Also, I have this no smudge eraser. They make a lot of different ones, but I'm just gonna be using this one today. And of course, you're gonna need paper as well. I use just plain photocopy paper. I know that's kind of uh, cheap, but I... I actually like it, it's just what I'm used to. Now here's the reason I'm gonna start off with the number two pencil in this particular case. Now for a lot of people who aren't that great at drawing or haven't had a lot of experience or practice with it, this is a nice way to start out. And this is what I'm doing is called gesturing. I'm just drawing simple forms just to get, the, just to plot out the shapes and everything like that. Now there are many different forms of gesturing and I'm just doing this one specific one. You're gonna see the familiar crosshair for the face guide and now I'm just drawing the general shape. Now the reason why this works is because a lot of drawing is about being specific and having things in the right place. Now you notice from my three minute drawings I like to freehand things, I don't really plot things out, especially if I only have three minutes. So and I don't really, I really don't do this very often and you know perhaps I should but for me I like to see where things go. But anyway, um, so if you're starting out or if you're not that confident with your skills left yet and you want to just you know, have something a little more secure for your drawings. A lot of artists build outward. They start with very, very simple structures, you know, like this, you know, they plot out where the ears and the eyes are. And that's kind of what this uh, cross line is supposed to be. This horizontal line is supposed to be where you put your eyes. And now see right there, I can erase it and say, okay, that's not, that doesn't look right. That doesn't look proportion. Building outward, just starting out with a very simple, simple design and then working outwards. So we have this line down the middle of the face and I know the line down the middle of the face is accurate. So now I can put the nose there and along with the eyes and everything like that, I could start making points. Now these points here at the, uh, the top of the bridge of the nose between the eyes and also where the tip of the nose is are also helpful guides too because as long as both those points are in the middle, as you can see, you can use them to guide things like the mouth. If you put these points out and let them go all the way down to the chin line, it's a good idea on how big the mouth should be. It's a good gauge on how wide your mouth should go. Once again, you don't have to stick to these, but they give you a nice generalized standard. So now we got the nose, the eyes, everything looks about right. I'm going to adjust the camera a little bit and I realized I was a little high up there. Okay, so now the eyes are generally in the middle of the face or the upper middle upper middle of the face. We know where the nose is now. Time for the hairline. So I'm just going to draw some rudimentary uh, bangs here, sweep them over the hairline just to give you that. And now I'm going to draw the shape of the hair. Now hair is also one of those things that some people do have trouble with. They do struggle with. And I also want to point out that it's uh, it's not um, it's not about drawing each individual hair. It's about drawing a general shape. And so again, when you're starting out, it's a good way to just draw what the outer hair will look like, and then you can go in to really work on the details. And I'm going to adjust that camera again so you can see a little more of the top of the head. And also, what you'll notice about this is I'm erasing right now. The reason I'm erasing right now is because, as I said, you build from you know the bottom up. Now that I have everything plotted out and I know the general shape of it, now I can erase this where I can faintly barely see it. And that's why I use the number two pencil because it actually doesn't leave too heavy a line and you can draw pretty lightly but still see it. But you can then erase it pretty easily and don't have to worry about it showing up. The mechanical pencil on the other hand, at least the one I'm using, leaves a more permanent mark or it's a little harder to erase. It digs into the paper a little more and that's why I like it for final detail work but not necessarily for gesturing. which. I only did in the very beginning. Like I said, there are plenty of different ways of gesturing, and gesturing, all it is, in case you're still not clear on it, is just drawing general shapes, just getting an idea of feel to it. There's some people who do it differently than others, again, and it's it's just a freeform idea of just getting getting used to things, just practicing and getting the hand movements down, getting an idea for this drawing. And as you can see, I'm doing a face. Uh, I like to start off with faces. I especially like to draw faces. So this is just going to be, by the way, a quick overall tutorial, just a first first tutorial, just a generalized drawing 101 kind of thing. You know, I can get into more specific stuff later on. You guys can ask me about certain stuff that you want to see or anything else like that. Let me know down in the comments. All right, so here we go with the eyes. Now, there are many different ways to draw eyes. Now, the first way I drew it was my typical one where I just draw two little, like two little C's inside the eyeball, like one outside outside C and then another inside and that creates the pupil. Uh, this one I first drew just two circles inside of it and then a black circle in the middle. We can get into that a little later, but I just drew them differently then I erased it to make it back to the way it was. Now I'm going back to that nose line and 
They're all different kinds of nose, noses. Uh, for me, the biggest trick I find with everything is if you just get down pat several different ways, like 10 different tricks, 10 different tricks that you tend to do, you can live pretty happy and people will think you're good at something. That's really all it takes is just having 10, 10 basic skills. And so when it comes to the nose, uh, this is one of my typical noses that I draw. I draw this little V to separate the tip of the nose from the underside. And then I just draw the nostrils. I don't ever draw the complete nose. And this also is, a, the nose specifically, and uh, sometimes the mouth, is a good example for a lot of comic book fans who want to know what's the difference between comic book art and outside art or other kinds of art. It's a very popular question because a lot of people don't realize this, that you could be a really great artist, but you might not necessarily be a great comic book artist. Or you could be a great comic book artist and not necessarily good at other kinds of art. And the reason for that is uh, comic book art is fairly unique, and I love it, and I think it's great. Uh, and right there, I'm realizing that I need to adjust that eye there. I want to make the eye a little more similar to the other eye. Uh, so here's the thing. When it comes to comic book art, there's a lot of implied lines. There's many reasons. Dynamic poses, stance to structures, and, and a lot of things that... Um, a lot of things that separate regular art from comic book art, but specifically for comic book art, one of the big things that I find that makes a difference is implied lines. Like with the nose, as I was saying, you don't draw the entire nose. You draw a few lines, but then leave a couple lines out there, or leave something broken, a little a broken line to just imply that the line is complete, but by not having it go all the way full through, it's it implies more. And I think that's kind of a cool thing about comic books, is that you can draw not a complete line, but still give the indication that the entire line is there. You're never going to see that in, well, you typically don't see that in other kinds of art. All right, so now I'm going to the hair, going back to this weird bowl cut kind of thing that I'm going with. Um, I don't know. Uh, I don't know why this was my default default uh, haircut in mind. It could be because this is what I had as a small child, and so I think this might be like my first inkling to what hair looked like. So maybe it kind of ruined me there. And right here I noticed that the uh, face is a little too too chubby, so I wanted to narrow him down, which, you know, would be fine except for the fact that the other cheek wasn't there. It was also pointed out that this drawing somewhat looks like me. I wasn't aiming to draw myself. That wasn't the goal here, so <laughs> I, I was just drawing a default face, like it's just a generic face. And so here we go. All right. So, and again, this is a this is this is just a very rudimentary tutorial. I'm just going over some general concepts. I'm not focusing on anything specific. I'm just giving you a brief a brief overlook at what you do uh, or what you can do, and giving you a look at what I do a little more than in more than three minutes. Now, um, I first, and you know, a lot of this is experimentation. Like right there, you see me trying to draw a little cheekbone to see how it looks, and I didn't like it, so I took it off. Or this little cleft in the chin. Once again, didn't like it, so I take it off. And that's the beauty of art, you know, practice. And this is what I mean about finding those 10 tricks, you know. See what works, see what, see what you can do well, or see what you like, and then just kind of go with that. And if you can figure out like a couple of those things, then you'll be pretty good. So, you know, like my standard, like this is kind of like a very standard look for me. And here, here I am, okay, so working on the hair again, as I said, a good thing for things that you have trouble with drawing is draw the overall shape, draw the outline of what you think it's supposed to look like, and then fill in details from here. In this case, the hair, I tried to fill out the details by feathering the edges a little bit more, but let's say you don't like it. Again, it's about experimentation. Just, here we go, I'm just gonna erase the whole thing now and uh, give them a more normal person haircut and not a, uh, little child's haircut so uh, what are we gonna do let's try something else uh, let's just see what looks good um, all right gonna give this a little bit of a widow's peak all right and I'm um, going with um, and see I'm, I switched back to the number two pencil because I'm just going to give a general outline and one that I intend to erase before I finalize it with the mechanical pencil or go to the next phase with the mechanical pencil shall I say all right, so there we go. And I'm gonna draw this, and it looks kind of like a flat top, like uh, almost like a guile haircut, but not quite. Uh, you know, the that uh, that uh, little little puffed out crew cut, as you will, a little kind of flat toppy look. All right, but you don't like that. Okay, and you can round off the edges a little bit. If we round out the edges a little more, it looks looks a little more natural. Okay, so there you go. That's one haircut possibility design that you could go with. So many different options, especially with hair. Hair's got a lot of options, so. So while it's tricky, you know, find find which works for you. And then, okay, but maybe you don't want a crew cut. Maybe you want more of that Peter Parker from like the 80s and the 60s look. So we can give him a little bit of a little bit of strands of hair coming down, hanging down his face like that. 
All right, and if we're also going to make it look less crew cutty, we can also narrow it down a little bit and round out the edges so it looks more like it's combed instead of shaved into a flat top. So there you go, round it out a little bit more. All right, and of course, we're going to erase that. And uh, that's a big key too. draw through uh, things. Even if it's going to be covered up by something else, you can cover it up later, but draw the thing you're going to draw all the way through, like his hairline. I drew it all the way through and then added the hair in front of his face and then just erase that mark in between. It's another benefit of being able to erase and working with pencil is the fact that the lines will always be complete and gesturing too, because you always know where everything is, even if you don't see that line into completion. All right, so there you go. There's a very simple pencil drawing. Now, I'm going to go into a little bit of inking. Try a little bit of that. Now, I am going to use... Uh, now, when it comes to the, uh, professional inking or getting uh, better results, there are other tools to use for sure. But today, I'm just going to be using a Sharpie uh, just because it shows up on camera pretty well and I... I don't have anything else, so uh, I am just going to be using a Sharpie. But here we go. Okay, so uh, we're going to look at the... Before we get into that, I just want to say that uh, there is that Kevin Smith joke that uh, inking is just a tracer. That's really not true. Uh, so here we go. We have the Sharpie. Uh, inking is a skill unto itself. So now the reason I don't really like a Sharpie is because it's too thick of a line. You can't really get finite details. It's it's harder to do unless the drawing is very big, but I'm going with it anyway, just so you can see. So I'm not just tracing, and as you can see, um, you know, I'm not exactly 100% following the line either because there's a little less accuracy with the Sharpie. So, okay, I'm going to fill in the eyebrows and retracing some lines, but when it comes to inking, it's also, there's, you know, it's a phrase that you can say, you know, how faithful, how loyal you're gonna be to the pencils. You know, how much of the inker are, how much of the anchor is going to be seen? How much of that artistry is going to be added? And that's could be a lot, it could be a little, and it depends on the person doing the inking. So right now, I'm trying to stay relatively true to my own pencils. It's a little different because I'm doing it. And I'm just adding on to this right now. And I'm not doing anything avant-garde yet. I'm not separating anything. I'm not changing things up. Maybe a little bit like there. I, I uh, squared off the jaw a little bit, the jawline. I, I'm not as fluid with it as I did during the pencil run. And here I am um, running it out a little bit more, adding a little bit of a thicker line. And that's one thing you could do. Um, that's another technique where you just kind of add lines on and especially in inking because um, inks have a distinct advantage over pencils with that that you can make a thicker line with ink and it says more it stands out a little bit more all right so and also i'm also making adjustments because of the fact that the marker is thicker so there are little tiny grooves that i couldn't get that kind of detail work and so i'm just kind of compensating for that like the two strands of hair i kind of put them a little closer okay so now i'm going to go over the outside the outline, fix it up a little bit, uh, round out the shape a little more because I kind of didn't stay as accurate to that as I want. Now there you go, now it's inked, but we can fix this. Oh, and another good thing is we can, after we're done, we can also clean this up a little bit more. But okay, so this is it. I stayed pretty faithful to the pencil as much as I can, but we can always do more to this if we want to. And this is what I mean about inkers, adding on a little bit more layers to it and showing a little more of the artist who's doing the inking they can always do that. So let's uh, start by just a little bit. Now we're just gonna add a little bit of shadow, like right there in the little creases of the eyes, we're gonna add a little shadow because from the eye line. And look at this, we're just gonna add one line over to the left of the hair. Now that makes it look like shadow from the hair itself. But keep in mind now when we have a light source, this is something you can kind of get overzealous with. You know, think about where a shadow casts. Now the lip, the lower lip's gonna cast a shadow, you know, down on the upper part of the chin. And so let's also look and think about where else the shadows are going to go. Let's see what else is going to cast a shadow, where that light source is coming from. Now I decided, okay, so the shadow is coming from the left, so let's do a little bit of the hair on down. And we're going to see more of that shadow on the left side, so when in doubt, draw a little bit on the left, on the left-hand side. And let's look over here, where else can we put it? Um, okay, so maybe there's gonna be a little more shadow here on the left side of the eye and on the nostrils and the nose. Uh, okay, yeah, we're gonna have a little bit of a shadow casting from the nose. Um, and also on the corner of the mouth. So on the left side of the corner of the mouth and on the left side of the lip more so than on the right side. So it's down into the left, we get a little more shadow. And I'm um, going to cast a little more shadow on the nose down and have that shadow come out to the left. And look, I'm gonna add another eye line. 
you know, a little bit more on the eyes and maybe in the corner of the eye on the left side once again because the light source is coming from the upper right and I'm just going to add a little, little dimple like shadow on the left of the mouth also adding to that idea and I'm going to add the, see I'm adding that additional line to the left side of the lines because that's where the the light source is coming from the right. Also hair on the ear, uh, the light uh, shadow on the ear and everything I'm casting that shadow on the left side drawing a line on the left making sure I keep to the left of that just to make the shadow a little more consistent and you see as simple as adding a thicker line really makes a difference now on the other side of the nostril again let's add a little bit and add a little bit more touching it up as much as I can I'm getting kind of uh, I'm getting kind of brave here but I'm also trying to stay cautious because I know this is a sharpie and I might want to do something highly detailed but realize that I can't so I'm um, trying not to go too bold but there you go left side of the face there you go and the chin let's add to that chin also I want to shorten this chin up a little bit too because I think it's a little long and there you go we can also shorten up the chin uh, that's another cool thing we do and working on the left side of it and you know adding, and adding little nuanced shadows as I said I'm jumping out a little bit but I don't want to go out too far with this because I know there will be a point of no return and when it comes to inking it's one of those things I, I can get carried away with very easily when it comes to inking. I can just want to add and add and add and then eventually I, f I, I, I forget what I'm doing and go a little too far. I, I will fully admit that I do that when it comes to inking. Uh, but there you go, um, adding to the left of everything. And I'm pretty much done. Uh, you get the idea. So uh, real, this was a real generalized overall tutorial of just one of the many processes that I do, one of the many ways that I, I approach art. and. So just remember guys, gesturing, shadow, keep in mind where your light sources are, um, you know, sharpies, they can do okay work, but they're definitely better tools to get for that. Uh, and oh, final step, uh, when it comes to pencils, and if you're going to ink it, you can just erase all the pencil marks, and that way you'll have nothing left but a beautiful inked drawing, no pencil lines, and no one will ever be able to see all the hard work, the gesturing, the skeletal lines, the, you know, the, the beginning fundamentals, and structures that you drew in place to get you organized to where you need to go and you can just have a nice finalized drawing like this. And especially wait till the ink dries before you erase because sometimes you can actually smudge the ink. So don't do that. Alright guys, so this was just the first overall general tutorial on how to draw. This is just giving you a brief idea of my process. But what do you guys think? What kind of things would you like me to cover? Do you want me to draw specific characters and show you how to walk through that? Uh, let me know down in the comments and I'm more than happy to keep doing more of these. I actually like it. I and have a lot of fun doing it. So yeah, let me know down in the comments and thank you so much for watching. And don't forget to subscribe right here to Dave Knows Comics. And as always, Dave Knows.